Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's having morning, a great Michelle. day. Hey, Michelle. Uh, September 10th. Here we are in South Lake, Texas. It's a beautiful day. It's always, That's I feel so like beautiful. it's always like this when we're here. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Right. Always. Yeah. Like it never changes what it looks like outside. Sunny, beautiful, cool, looks great. Anyway, so glad you guys were able to join us today. Mel is at a football game. So I'm Go just hogs, sitting right? in the seat. So that's, I think, I guess you get the job when you sit that's in the right. seat. So. She didn't know that when she sat down. <laughs> she thought she was going to hide. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, and I will hide for yeah. sure after I'm finished with this. So anyway, so glad you guys are with us and we will now do our entering in prayer. Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Spirit, Spirit. Amen. 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 Come, come to divine will, will. Come, come to reign in me. With this one act, I want to embrace my entire day. I want to embrace every thought, every word, every action, and all the people I meet, the things I have to do, all my duties, and I want all to be in their most holy will. I want to put my whole day right from this instant in your most holy will, so that should I be distracted, or should there be things I forget, they may all be done in your will. Amen. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, faithful. and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and then you shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Remember your congregation, which you have possessed from the beginning. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto you. The Lord be with you, and with your Spirit. Right. Oh, God, God, who has sought the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same spirit to be truly wise and to ever rejoice in this holy consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I'll kick off the first reading. I was contemplating this reading in adoration today, not knowing that Mel was gone. And then when I came here today, uh, we were looking for a reading and it's September 8th, 1927. And it just morphed into this being a symbol about honoring our blessed mother's birthday and doing readings on September 8th throughout the various volumes. And so we will kick off with this one, but you will see a recurring theme of September 8th readings. Um, and again, September 8th, 1927. It's somewhat of a long one. If anyone is interested in reading, I would be happy to read if someone needs a small. Uh, what volume is that? Volume 22. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Would anyone like to read? You're the winner. Okay. okay. Hold on, give everybody one second yet. Okay. Mom's already there, so we're good. That's right. Well, yeah. She cheated. She got there ahead of time. Okay. John's the slow one this time around. Okay. How all creation is fixed in God and is the relator of the supreme being. The sorrows suffered in the divine way in Jesus and in Mary, meaning of the 40 days in the desert. I continue my flight in the supreme volition, which keeps all creation as though in the palm of its hand. And I am forced to hover from one created thing to another, to trace all that glory which I can give to my creator through them, and to provide him with love for everything he has done for me and for all. Now, while I was doing this, my beloved Jesus moved in my interior and told me my daughter. When our divinity created the whole creation, it left it all bound within itself. So it said that the heavens keep their relationship, their relation with God, are fixed in God, and from within God, they spread their immensity. The stars are bound in God, and from within God, they adorn with gold the vault of the firmament. firmament. In God is the sun bound, and from the divine bosom, it spreads its light, which invests the whole earth. There is not one created thing which does not have its links in God. And while they came out, they do not separate from God. God is jealous of his acts, 
and he loves them so much that he does not permit that they be separated from him. Therefore, he keeps them all fixed within himself as perennial glory of his own acts, as relator of his being to creatures, which with me voice speak with facts of the one who created them and tell with facts that he is most pure and endless light, love that is never extinguished, eye that sees everything, hears and penetrates everything. The sun says this, created things also say, look at us and with facts we will tell you. This is why we do not speak because facts are greater than words. He is power which can do anything. He is immensity which envelops everything. He is wisdom which orders everything. He is beauty which enraptures everything. The creation is the continuous narration of the supreme being from whom it receives continuous light. And as you go around from one thing to another, you remain bound through them to your creator and, relieve, and receive the relations of light, of love, of power, etc., which each of them possess. On hearing this, I said, my love, the created things do not have reason. How can they, they give me their relations and give you so much glory? And Jesus added, my daughter, created things are in relationship with me and are bound to me like the members to the head. And they act like members when they receive life from the head. See, you have hands and feet. These do not have reason, nor do they speak. But because they have life from the head, the hands operate, the feet walk, remaining at the disposal of what the head wants and forming its greatest glory. Only if hands and feet are separated, severed from the body, then they would neither work nor steps, they would have neither work nor steps because they would lose the life which the head communicated to them. So it is with the whole creation. Even though created things have neither reason nor speech, because they are united with God like members to the body, they receive life from their creator. And therefore, all created things are operating. Their acts are incessant and are at our disposal more than your members are at the disposal of your head. And just as your hands have the virtue of communicating your works to other creatures, so do created things have the virtue of communicating the good they possess to the creatures and to one who lives in my divine will. Because the will that animates them is one with that of the soul, they feel that she belongs to the body of the whole creation, and therefore they communicate to her all the relations which they have with the head, and with the great love they bind her to themselves. Therefore, be constant in living in my divine will if you want to live communal life with your Jesus and with all, with all creation. And give me all the glory which my works give me incessantly. Well, that's take a lot of yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I wanted to take one. Yeah. So, so I really think that um, the natural things that don't have a voice speak louder than we do. With yes. The voice. And um, it's interesting because we've learned oh. that Mary took everything within. And so in our silence, we speak volumes. Oh more than what comes out of our mouth yes and and what it was saying also and you hear this in some other writings about us as individuals in the divine well that we each have some sort of a special gift yes. that we've been given we show that well same thing with creation yes you know they're all showing one of the attributes of god but they don't have all the attributes so you know, that's what the he's saying here, yes. too, about the body parts and the parts of creation. You know, the sun has something that it gives back in its light and its heat. The, uh, the voice of the, of the waves in the ocean, you know, the ocean's constantly yeah. got that murmuring going on. So there's that aspect yes. of God. That. Yeah. And it's all through creation, just like we are. But anything that gets severed. <laughs> then you don't no longer have that. Right, the flowers lose their color. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're all members to the head, which yes. Christ is the head to all those members. Just like we've always said, Christ is the head of the church. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, that's making a lot more sense now on how we are to become a member and be united once he controls. Yes. He should be in charge. We should be united with that one body and be in union with him. And then we also say how he becomes our hands and feet. Mm -hmm. So you, it talked about here, you cut off a foot. I mean, it it can't, it it can't do anything because it's dismembered from the head. And it's a dead item. It's a dead item. Right. When you're not not united. Yeah. Because you're not united to the head. The whole thing is just tying. I love the way they've described this. Yes. Yes. And we don't have to worry about creation. Creation is already right. It's all it's in the divine God. will. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, one of the things that I contemplate uh, almost every day is I go to mass at Cistercian and it's up on this hill and it's surrounded by all these trees. And every day I walk out of mass and there are all these birds chirping. Sure. And it just is immediately put upon my heart is there that's their praise of God. And it also just God could have made every bird sing the same song, but they don't. None of them sing the same song. They all sing their Mm -hmm. own song of praise. And then also almost every day it's put upon my heart just when people contemplate the vastness of space or the vastness of the ocean, Mm -hmm. it's so often devoid of recognizing the infinite nature of God who created these things that our human brain tries to conceive the vastness of these created things without relating the infinite nature of the creator Mm -hmm. of those vast things. So that was really put upon my heart when I read that. And that's part of the gift, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many parts of this gift, but part of the gift is when you hear those birds, they are there for you. Mm -hmm. They're like, good morning, good morning. (laughs) And then all Jesus wants is for you to recognize, oh, I love you in that bird. Right. Like, thank you for that bird. Right. That's what we don't do. Mm-hmm. You know, people will say, oh, it's so beautiful. Everything's so beautiful. But are you recognizing who truly is in that bird? Yeah, where right. the beauty came from. Giving where did the beauty that. come from? And that's part of this gift. Yeah, people can go, oh my gosh, look at all this vastness. The ocean's beautiful. The mountains, the yeah. mountains are beautiful. Yeah. The Grand Canyon's beautiful. You know, but... Are you then recognizing who's in that beauty and who gave you that beauty? And are you placing your I love you on that and thanking him for that? And that's part of the gift. It seems so elementary, but I don't know if people do that. No, but, but um, I did. I mean, I did prior to knowing. You can acknowledge it, but saying I love you and in those birds and each different tweet that they give, you know, the chirping that they give, you can almost now, you can tell which kind of bird it is once you figure out what kind of. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and then there's the hummingbird they and, yeah. make. It's like, oh, that's a red bird. You don't have to look blackbird. Mm-hmm. I want to go back to the Christmas and uh, Jesus moved to my interior and told me, my daughter, when our divinity created the whole creation, it left it all bound within itself. Yeah. Period. So this is what John yeah. was saying. Tell me in sin, and then it became unbound. So we'll go back to the Good Samaritan. What was the first thing he did? He bound them all up. So that's what. It, we do in the divine will so it can be said that the heavens keep their relation with god are fixed in god and from within god they spread their immensity and why that's impactful is that the saints did give glory to god the father in all of their acts but they remain on the earth whereas the divine will goes back into what into uh bounded with god so it can be said that the heavens keep their relation with god are fixed in God, and from within God, they spread their immensity. So the gift is to pull us up from the earth back into the firmaments. So if you if you focus on that, then it says the stars are bound in God, and from within God, they adorn with gold the vault of the firmament. You, as a child of light in the firmament, are what? Are you from within God adorning, adorn, adorning the firmament with his divinity? Right, you're you're expressing more his divinity, more of God. To what Lynette says, and you don't do this by preaching or um, it's all okay. silent. Um, to back to what you said, the church doesn't have to go out and evangelize. Mm-hmm. 
by attending mass, you are evangelizing. You can't remove God and the power of God. And as what we've learned from listening to, I uh, always say her name, Francis Hogan, he wouldn't let you know what you were doing because pride would overwhelm you. And he doesn't want that. He's so jealous, as he says here, he's so jealous. He's not going to let you know what you're doing because he doesn't want to lose you. And that would, you would be lost if you were to, because you start focusing on that versus focusing on uh, being the nothing. So uh, the stars are bound in God, and within God they adorn with gold the balls of the firmament. And God is the sun bound, and from the divine bosom it spreads its light, which invests the whole earth. So he's saying that in the divine will, you are spreading the light of God to all souls. I love how this is like, you know, he's telling us about creation and what you become bound up again in God and what you're doing. There's not one created thing which does not have its links in God. So that means all created things are what linked to you. So when you talk about the birds and so forth, they are singing your song and you're singing their song. It's a it's a full orchestra back and forth between you now bound up with God and creation. And so the beauty of that was when Blessed Mother came into her birth, all creation did not know that she was immaculately conceived and was going to the throne of God. But when she was born, all creation recognized that one, one from the heavens is now here with us and is now our voice. And we can continue this harmony back and forth between God's creation and, and was, yeah. yes, as it was in the beginning in his creation. God is jealous of his acts and he loves them so much that he does not permit that they be separated from him. So again, you as a child of light are taking all acts of all humans, of all from fallen Adam to the last soul, because God is a jealous God and knew that all acts were going to return to him. He waited 6,000 years. Oh, he had our blessed mother 2,000 years ago and he had Jesus. He's waited another 2,000 years for Louisa and for the children of light to come in to do what? To give him back what he gave to us in creation. Okay, himself. Therefore, he keeps them all fixed within himself. So you're bound to all human acts. As permitted, as perennial glory of his own acts. Perennial glory of his own acts. As relators of his being to creatures. Which, with mute voice, that's why she kept everything inside. It's a mute voice. You can't. You can't, she, many times, and you start, you can't speak of it. There's no words will ever, right. you can't convince, right? Mute voice speak with facts of the one who created them and tell with facts that he is most pure and endless light, love that is never extinguished, eye that sees everything, hears and penetrates everything. The sun says this, created things also say, look at us. And with facts, we tell you, this is why we do not speak. Because facts are greater than words. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because, you know, he's using the, the creation to tell us, but that's us as well. Facts are greater than words. Louisa wrote. Louisa, Louisa wrote. She would speak to her confessors when her confessors come. Actually, she'd get what she was writing and they would read it. Right? And then afterwards, when she stopped writing the last seven years of her life, she wrote letters. They, you know, they never took her out of the home. She wasn't on a street corner preaching. Nothing. She wrote. She kept everything inside because she knew with facts what she was doing <clears throat> versus anything that she could say. Which the facts are the knowledge. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And you know, this kind of reminds me not to be derogatory toward other services, other Christian services, but a lot of that is talking. It is. And you know, it's it's preaching, but it's talking a lot. And the louder you talk, and the faster you talk, the better you are, or whatever it is. But what's the fact in our service? The fact is the consecration. Right. Is Jesus coming to earth again, as he said he would all the time. I'll be with you till the end of time. Mm -hmm. That's the fact that occurs. It doesn't take, you know, a lot of preaching and all of that type yeah. of thing. Preaching's good. It's fine. 
but you know that's just what you were saying no, the it, facts it's versus the so us trying to convince people with yeah, words yeah. and not to interrupt but that's a part of exactly what you said i want to expand upon that because we get attacked as catholics because of our love of our mother we just do although it says in the scripture all all generations will call me blessed that they don't know what the word blessed is. But the reason why they get so upset with us bowing to her, making a sign of cross for kissing statues and so forth, is they don't do right worship. They do not know how to do right worship. And, and us as Catholics need to really, really right worship to understand what is happening at a mass. Mm -hmm. And it says all through scripture, you will take the saving cup. That's how you do right worship. So the fact that they don't know right worship, anything we do to them is going to be wrong worship because the height of their worship is using their voice, as you said. But when we receive the Eucharist, you are mute. You are mute. You, you might, some, some the, the new mass, you say amen. But if you go back to the traditional masses or, or, or whatever, you don't say anything. The priest is the only one who speaks and he's telling you what you, who you are receiving in the sacrament on the altar, you know, and, it, and it's that right worship that you get back to. So it's, we don't have to, and it's the, the muteness is how you give the right worship, not by all the confusion mm -hmm. and noise. Which is in all over scripture. Don't Absolutely. Go hidden in a room. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. I mean, and Mary took it all into her heart. I mean, that's, that's your face. that makes a lot more sense now, right? We've yeah. been talking about that. Yes. before it's like yes. she took everything in that's what we are to do and when you hear from francis and we just recently spoke about this and she talks about don't say you're intercessing out loud no because never. guess who else can hear you right satan right and he's gonna go to wherever you're intercessing right. for he's gonna attack them right keep everything he can't touch you don't inside. he can't he can't touch your interior he has no idea what you're thinking feeling doing keep it all quiet mm -hmm. You can say your prayers, you know, that your non-intercessory prayers out loud, right? He, he probably hates that. Right. You Especially say your father, Mary. Father, oh. Hail Mary. Right. He hates that. Right. Keep your intercessory interior. Yeah. So you are, you, you're an absolute nothing. Right. You're not saying anything and you're just going to look like you're doing nothing. Right. And that's the way we were always meant to be. Right. So this talking. And you, I love that nothingness because if you really look upon her birth, all of creation knew that <laughs> something just happened, right? Mm -hmm. Jerusalem, the people didn't no. know, right? And her mother knew and her father knew or knew something special because Anne was of a later later in her years right. conceived Mary. And, um, but she always kept, she hid in the, in the temple. You know, right. she was very, all of her life, you see her as, mm -hmm. she's known as Mary, not Mary of Nazareth or Mary of any home. We just know her Mary, blessed mother, mother of God. If you think about it, like you have Mary Magdalene or Mary of Clive, 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 Bright, but we just have Mary. So she was always, she, she, and it goes back to because she was, her name wasn't even Mary. Her name was, again, Queen of Heaven. Right. <laughs> you know, you mother of God. Yeah. Yeah. Million names, right? And um, in your nothing, you too, you lose your name. You lose your name. Your name becomes fiat. You lose uh, um, everything, even your address, if you think about it. If you're reading this writing and you understand, when I say you lose your address, I don't live in the earth of, this, this might be where my body is, right. but I live in the firmament. Right. I have been pulled up, um, raptured. <laughs> if you want to go into a word, um, the refuge, his sacred heart, her immaculate heart. You are you're mm -hmm. hidden. You're hidden. You're hidden. You're gone. It's beautiful because he's jealous, and he's not going to let you fall out. He's not. Um, you know, she's not. Luis is not. I mean, there's a Mary. lot of people that are keeping us. Mary. I mean, Mother Mary is keeping us. Absolutely. In the Absolutely. The saints, angels, everyone's yes. keeping us in 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 it, in the, the lane. Like yeah. y'all used to say, we're not going outside the no. white lines anymore. No. It's over. You can't you you he's so jealous, he's not gonna let you. It, it, he just is not gonna let you. 
because you contain all acts inside of you. And so I think that's a lot of people's fear or are, I put a word on there, but I don't know what it is. You know, don't believe that you can, don't believe you will, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> but if you're truly are reading this, no, no. If you truly understand the Catholic Mass, then this is, this comes with it. If you truly understand that when you receive the saving cup, when you are giving right worship and that you are connected to all, because what are you receiving? You're receiving the all. Then this and understanding this is not, not far-fetched. It's not far-fetched. And what he can do for a piece of bread. I mean, right. What can't he do with us? Which he wants to do with us because what? Right. Because us remain, remaining mute, we're actually the voice of all. Whereas that beautiful piece of bread that he comes into is not the voice of all. And it's limited. It's limited. And inside of us, so. So and what's amazing is it's always been there. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, sorry, no, please. It, it's always been there. I, I love, you know, this line where you read about the facts. To get back to the facts, um, even Jesus said, if you say so, you know, he, mm -hmm. he, he never defended himself. He didn't have to. And neither did Mary. She took everything within. And I know this sounds crazy, but my husband is a numbers man. Now, the numbers don't lie to mass. People do. And so, like, when we get into all these different homilies that are said in all different denominations, the facts get changed. Yes. Mm -hmm. To fit the yeah. right. narrative. Their narrative. Yeah. Which is so uh, limited. Mm -hmm. My daughter created things that are in relationship with me and are bound to me like the members to the head. And they act like members which receive life from the head. See, you have hands and feet. These do not have reason, nor do they speak. But because they receive life from the head, the hands operate, the feet walk, remaining at the disposal of what the head wants, and forming its greatest glory. When you become bound to him in the divine will, he becomes your head. And all of our feet, all of our steps, all of our working of our hands, everything we speak, everything is giving him glory. If hands and feet are severed from the body, which they can't be once you are bound to him. If hands and feet are severed from the body, then would they have neither works nor steps, which we know that's what Adam happened to Adam as he lost his head. Because they would lose the life which the head communicated to them. So it is with the whole creation. I don't know if it's this reading or another reading, but it talks about Adam and after the fall. And he still knew that God was the head, but he wasn't bound to him anymore. He was half dead as um because he's been filled with the sin and the life of god is not in him reigning he doesn't have possession of god i just this anyways yep, no, keep reading just uh okay and now we're moving to kind of the uh, second section so, of this reading so, wait can i say something to mary when you have a chance um, you could, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just was also thinking about the element of that the stars are bound in God and from within God, they adorn the gold vault of the firmament in God is the sun bound and from the divine bosom, it spreads its light, which invests the whole earth. There's not one created thing, which does not have its links in God. That to me is a fact. That to me is what can permeate people who have no conception of God or have never learned of God. They can look at that Grand Canyon like Michelle was saying earlier, but somehow it permeates and touches them on a level that we don't understand because that's one of God's facts. The sun is his fact, the stars. And so in that we take science and we go back to numbers, Liness. All of it is breathing into us in every moment of our existence. And the souls that are far away from our Lord are still touched by this magnificent cacophony of beauty that surrounds us incessantly. So I just wanted to bring that in as a fact oh, for you. today. A beautiful and excellent vocabulary. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's wonderful. Thank I you. Just 
I just wanted to add also this, this writing gave me such a beautiful picture. Um, you know how God's creation finds beauty in creation, you know, the birds, the mountains and everything. And as the children of light, we are the skin of the body of Christ. And I can just see God looking down on the earth and all he sees is this glowing light, mm -hmm. the children of light reflecting back to him himself. We are his creation, we're created in his image. And I just see it, we radiate back to him. And I just see that's such a beautiful image. And he thinks we're beautiful and we think his creation is beautiful. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That is beautiful. Yes, Thank you so and much. All, all the earth is dependent on the sun. So mm -hmm. as she said, it's like, so all, everything is dependent on you, on the children of light to be the light of all, to seep into the souls and to bring back to God what is due to God for all and in the name of I like the word seek because that's what the sun does. It seeks yeah. into the darkness, and that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I love that. And mm -hmm. they don't even know you're doing it. Yeah. No. yeah. It's like Francis Assisi or whoever said, preach always, use words when necessary. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. Assisi they say St. Francis of Assisi, but yeah. Yeah. it was St. Francis. Yeah. It was St. Francis. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next section of this. Right, so I wanted yeah. to say a little history. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. pause. So what had happened was when they went and pulled the writings out of the vault, you could see that it would have one date, but there'd be several days under one date. So, because sometimes when you read the reading, you're like, well, that's all flowing with this. And all of a sudden it's like a whole different yeah. lesson with something. And it was, they didn't know what date to put on it. So they just put it under the same date. Mm -hmm. So she didn't always date by okay. the date. So that she, she could be moving absolutely. on a different date. Yes. So this could be yeah. three that's days later. Yeah. We're not going to go any farther. Yeah. Yeah. Just, because it goes into it another, goes yeah, a whole other thing. Yeah. And it just, this is a whole other thing, but it's also really good. <laughs> <Right. laughs> right. After this, I was following the holy divine volition in the act in which my sweet Jesus separated from the sovereign queen to go into the desert. And while compassionating one another, I thought to myself, how could the sovereign queen separate from her dear son for as many as 40 days? She loved him so much. How could she endure being without him? I, who do not have her love, suffer so much for a few days that he deprives me of himself. What must it have been for my mama? Now, while I was thinking this, my adored Jesus moved to my interior and told me, my daughter, we both suffered in separating from each other, but our sorrow was suffered in a divine way, not in a human way. And therefore, it did not separate either from happiness or from impenetrable peace. Happy I departed from the desert. Happy the height of my celestial mama stayed. In fact, the sorrow suffered in the divine way has no virtue of shading even slightly the divine happiness, which contains endless seas of joys and of peace. This really struck me, just that concept of suffering in a divine way that that it's hard to conceive that in the midst of Jesus's passion, he had peace, but he did. And mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is just profound. It really struck me. So can we, can we take a pause there? Because uh, Lynette told me this great story this past week, and I would love for her to share it on the wedding feast of Cana, because it was after the wedding feast that he um, gets baptized and he goes into the desert. Right. So I heard, I heard this on EWTN mm -hmm. radio, this story. I, I can't take any credit. And I hope I, I hope I can relay it properly. But um, so back in these times, the Jewish times of the wedding, um, the women were on one side of the room and the men were on the other. So when Mary noticed that there wasn't any wine, she had to walk to the other side of the room to tell Jesus. Right. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So she walks over to him and it's very short and it's very, it's, it's very short that from what we read in the Bible is she walks up to him and she says, they have no wine. And of course he answers, what does that have to do with me? My time hasn't come. And she just turns around and walks towards the kitchen to tell the servants, do whatever he tells you. But the point of this is that when she turned around to walk to the kitchen, mm -hmm. she had to be crying or feeling, even though their hearts never separated, they yeah. were fused together. She knew that was the beginning of his public ministry, and it would 
it would be a, a difficult road and there would be no more Jewish prayers at night saying good night and all of the things that they always did together mm -hmm. his whole life had just come to an end. Right. So it had to be a very long walk for her mm -hmm. to the kitchen. That is beautiful. I had never heard that story before. No. But it's very profound. Yes. Like she would have she she knew. She knew. Yeah. But then you're reading this and what but how that they sorrow were then, is different. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. she them. took everything in. Right. It's she not like in a human in. level when we would say goodbye to our children going to go uh to college, right? Yeah, right. Guess, I look yeah. at you because it's a, a new experience for you this, this year with your oh. daughter. But it was the divine suffering is like he's going out to start his mission of saving yeah. the world in his in preaching the kingdom and so forth. So you know yeah, we're not quite and so when it, when it talks about the divinity, that's how I understand it was like of course she is a mother, like okay, mm -hmm. take your toothbrush and don't forget to pack this yeah. and you know, write every week. But yeah. the divinity was, you know. She knew. I know what you're going mm -hmm. to go do now, and and uh, this is what you were brought to the earth to do, and you we need were to, brought to the earth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, and it's funny that you bring that up because the week before I dropped Cole off in Boston, that is exactly what the Lord put upon my heart: is I don't want you to give me this gift begrudgingly. I want you to give me this gift with joy. And so my whole thing when I dropped him off was just, I'm not going to cry. Like, I'm not going to cry because that is me proving to myself that I'm giving this gift with joy. And I was the only one that didn't cry, but it was only because I was like trying to give with joy. And it's like interior, I was not perfectly there, but that was really what the Lord called me that week before is don't do this begrudgingly. I don't want a begrudging gift. I want you to give me this gift joyfully. Um, and so that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. What do you think about that's the real deal. <laughs> when Mary was dropped out, what was the age of three? Yeah. 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 I just imagine that. Well, mm -hmm. and after they mourned her child for yeah. so yeah. long, and yeah. they finally had yeah. one, yeah. and they just gave her up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, it, she had to be hidden. Yeah. She had to she be hidden. Um, you know, when I can talk about the Jewish tradition, it's, it's, it's what was happening to Anne Makes because she to was barren. And so in the Jewish tradition, they play like, well, why are you barren? What did you do wrong? Mm -hmm. And you, you, there sin was a sin. You. So it's same thing with Samson's, Samson's mother, same thing with uh, um, Elizabeth. Um, Sarah, they, they were just chastised to, and they would be crying out to God, like, I love you above all things, but yet you've made me barren. But you see that everybody sees in the silence, they're judging. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and where can we give you glory, God, if I who love you am barren? It's a contradiction. And so. You see, and so once Anne became, uh, um, conceives Mary, that that is removed from her. And then it's almost like this freedom where they can, they can worship rightly and do, because they were chastised, even going to the temple. And you think about Zachariah and Zachariah, his mm -hmm. wife is barren yeah. and he's a priest, mm -hmm. a high priest, you know, the contradiction. So it lifts them to where they can get into the freedom to where, yes, that had been very hard to drop off Mary, but you have to, the church, you know, Samson's mother did Different. the same thing with Samson. And, and we don't know John the Baptist, you know, what really what his whole story was with Elizabeth and Zechariah. And we don't know, like, once God gives them the gift, um, then give them back the gift back to God. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So again, that would be a divine suffering of the parents mm -hmm. versus a yeah. human suffering because they've been lifted on a whole different level. And and um, and because of who she was, of who Mary was. So just her voice walking in when she greets Elizabeth sanctifies John the Baptist in the womb. It's the first time mm -hmm. you're hearing that. Mm -hmm. And Elizabeth is sanctified. So the minute that she is born and she's crying and so forth, what happened to Anne and, and, and Jotham, who knew that they should have been able to conceive because of where they were in life, knew, and also because in some tradition of the mystics, they were told 
Joe come at the moment of his death, but Ian from the conception of who Mary, who she was, uh, who she conceived. You know, just, it does put on like a mystical beauty, incredible mm -hmm. depthness into the story of her bringing Mary to the temple. Then as to drop off her kids off to college. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for, like, sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Just the grace, Absolutely. the grace mm -hmm. poured upon them to do, yeah. you know. So going on with that, oh, it yeah. says, <clears throat> sorrows suffered in a divine way are like little drops of water in the immense sea, the power of whose waves has a virtue of changing them into happiness. Mm -hmm. The sorrow suffered in a human way has a virtue of breaking true happiness and of disturbing peace. The divine way never. More so, since my queen mama possessed the son of my will by grace and I possessed it by nature, the sun remained in her and remained in me, but its rays did not separate because light is indivisible. It therefore, in the same light, she remained in me and followed in my acts, and I remained in her at the center of life. So the separation, while true, was apparent. In substance, we were fused together and inseparable, because the light of the divine will placed our acts in common as if they were one alone. And besides, I went to the desert to call back that same divine will of mine, which for 40 centuries creatures had deserted from their midst. And I, for 40 days, wanted to remain alone to repair the 40 centuries of human will during which mine had not possession, possessed its kingdom in the midst of the human family. And with my very divine will, I wanted to call it back again into their midst so that it might reign. Upon returning from the desert, I deposited it in my mama with those acts of divine will which create which creatures had rejected and had kept as though in a desert so that she might be the faithful but depository the repair and the empress of the kingdom of my will only the sovereign lady could possess this deposit so great because she's possessed within herself the very divine will which could contain the will deserted by the creatures how could we occupy ourselves with our sorrow of being separated for 40 days when it was about re reintegrating, about calling back our divine will to reign in the midst of creatures? In our sorrow, we were more than happy because we wanted to place the kingdom of the supreme fiat in safety. And the celestial queen was waiting with yearnings for my return in order to receive the deposit of the new son so as to requite her son, her love, all of its acts, which the human ingratitude had rejected. She acted as true mama to my divine will, acting as the true mother also for creatures, in infiltrating the life, the happiness, and the joy of possessing the kingdom of the eternal fiat. So what, what this just really struck me is, and I had never heard anything like this before about the desert, but going out into the des desert and giving all the failed acts of all eternity and bringing them back and putting it in Mary so that they could be repaired. Mm -hmm. Just all of that waiting for Louisa, waiting for the children of light to join with Mary in repairing all of those field acts. That was just so significant. Mm -hmm. And when you think about the desert in the Bible, it, it's like a couple of sentences in, in a couple of the mm -hmm. gospels. And then when you think about this, it's like, whoa, that's very significant. And so it just kind of really hit me. He says in uh, one of the writings, he said, they were so stingy with me. Like the apostles had written so much more about this. <laughs> that's so stingy. Yeah. You know, yeah. well, that's true because yeah. we all do think that, you know, like the scourging at the pillar. Yeah, all yeah. those things. It's a one sentence. It's almost like a throwaway. Right. It, it was left right. for There's this. So it was yeah. left for the divine. Mm -hmm. the right. was. It was. It added great detail. It added yeah. a yeah. color commentary. Now. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, 
yeah, the prophets, you know, as they're, they're running for their lives, they're trying to write down stuff, you know, as, when they can take breaks and so forth. Mm-hmm. But they're, I love it when you listen to Jeremiah that he's in the, in the, in the, um, the, the well, he's grown his yeah. sister and he, he, not he never that. thinks anybody's ever going to read what he's written or there's going to be a whole book in the Bible, you know, on it. But it's funny because Jesus said they were so stingy with me and uh, they could have written more, but yeah. it's, <laughs> but the 40 centuries and yeah. the 40 yeah. days and the desert, all of that time yeah. that yeah. together, you know, that I looked at that Colby Center oh, yeah. for creation, yeah. you know, and that you had given me that. It's yeah, like Hugh Owens. Owens. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that I just read some of that again this week about the timing mm-hmm. and he ties it together, you know, not just the geological things about the flood. Right. He's talking about that in one reading. And how that goes right back to a certain date. It's so many years since then. And there's a mathematical equation in there. And it shows that if they, and oh, first thing, there's three, there's three strands, that separate DNA strands that everybody has in Mm -hmm. that. The wives of uh, Shem, Ham, Japheth, the three sons. Ham and and Japheth. Yeah. Yeah. Those three wives, it's the women that carry the DNA strand. And all of, all of the people existing today have those three the strands. strands yeah. Individual. I mean, you come from one of those three strands, which is all that was left after the flood. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. so there was that. And then there was the time frame and how many generations since then, the years and the growth in population. Yes. Which being an actuary, I've studied demographics and, you know, the growth in population is a certain percentage, fairly close. Obviously, it's slowed down a lot now, but they can go back to population statistics only about four or five hundred years. But doing that, they came up with the number of the growth in population. If the uh, earth and if humanity is, you know, a million years old or half a million years old, whatever, you know, they're trying to say it is, we would, yes, the numbers would be way too big on earth. There wouldn't just be 7 billion people here today. There would be trillions of people here today. So the numbers don't work to go way back, but it's like, yeah, the 40. Yeah. Okay. There it is. And that's the numbers that, you know, we, these are facts. Yeah. Jesus Mm -hmm. isn't just telling us stuff to kind of tie back to the myth. Yeah, of Noah and the myth right. of Adam. Yeah, these are this is a real deal. Right. Yeah, it right. is very interesting right. when you start right. reading this. When science really wants to be science and look for yes. facts versus trying to change the yes. facts to the, yeah. their narrative, yeah. mm-hmm. you're all going to come to the same conclusion. Yeah. And actually, you and I attended yeah. a few moments when he that came was, to Dallas, yeah. Yeah. and he said, December. "What was the carbon carbon dating?" Yeah. That carbon dating was their worst nightmare because with yeah, carbon was, dating, they're like, oh, oh, the most Earth can be is ten thousand years old, yeah. and he was like, well, they're getting close, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, uh, at least they moved it down from billions to ten thousand. Mm-hmm. But carbon dating did not mm-hmm. become science's friend. friend. Yeah. It, if they were anti God, anti creation story, mm-hmm. it became their enemy because and they can't, yeah. and they have to base it off of carbon dating versus, you know, they talked about the Grand Canyon, like. All that, none of that would have worked the way that science was working on yeah. age and the water and all that. It doesn't work. Only carbon dating works. And yeah. yeah, interesting about the DNA. I remember him saying that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And of course, the geological structures on the earth, going back to the flood, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, if you look at all of the river valley areas, mm-hmm. you know, you've got this little it's bitty river away. now down at the bottom, bottom. But at some point, you know, it carved out yeah, all of this. Yeah. That goes this D shape. Uh-huh. So, did the river run a lot fuller for lots of years? Oh, oh. there was a split. And when it all rushed out, it carved yeah. all of this out. And then after the flood, you know, it was just your normal river, right. which it was to some de- degree before the flood. Right. But the whole thing was like, well, that explains that. I go to the Mississippi River and look at these tall yeah, cliffs, yeah, the cliffs yeah. on the sides and think, how come this river used to be? so yeah. big right now it's so little yeah right. that wasn't it it's yeah. always been it was the flood yeah they carved it all out then yeah. it all rushed back yeah 
interesting, uh, interesting side note. Um, Pakistan has gone through a massive flooding. Mm -hmm. 30 million people displaced. And I just saw a video where they're saying it's an ocean. Like they don't know where they're going to, the water is not receding. They don't know what to do with all the water that mm -hmm. is in Pakistan that has consumed it. So to your point of the great flood, mm -hmm. um, they're experiencing this now in these areas that are getting this mass amount of water. Because Pakistan's surrounded by the mountains as well. And so where where is it going to go? And um, they're still displaced. It's not, uh, we're not hearing about it, but but you, why would they not want you to hear about it? Because it, it's what repeat, you know, history repeating itself. So more on the this the number 40. Mm -hmm. 40 day, oh wait, did I say yet? Uh, my daughter, the number 40 is symbolic and significant in my life down here. When I was born, for 40 days, I wanted to remain in the grotto of Bethlehem, symbol of my divine will, which, while being present in the midst of creatures, was as hidden as outside the city of their souls. And I, in order to repair for the 40 centuries of human will, wanted to remain outside of the city for 40 days, in a miserable hut, crying, moaning, and praying, to call back my divine will into the city of souls so as to give it its dominion. And after 40 days, I went out to present myself to the temple and reveal myself to the old Simeon. He was the first city I was calling to the knowledge of my kingdom. And his joy was so great that he closed his eyes to the earth to mm -hmm. open them to eternity. 40 days I spent in the desert and then immediately I did my public life to give them the remedies and the means in order to reach the kingdom of my will. For 40 days, I wanted to remain on earth after my resurrection to confirm the kingdom of the divine fiat in its 40 centuries of kingdom, which it was to possess. So in everything I did down here, the first act was the restoration of the kingdom. All other acts entered into the secondary order but the first link of connection between me and the creatures was the kingdom of my will. Therefore, when it is about my will, I hold nothing back, neither light nor sacrifices, nor manifestations, nor happiness. It is seeds that I released from myself so as to make it known, to make it rain, and to make it loved. And so I just loved this connection between the 40, the 40, the 40, mm -hmm. the 40 days right after his birth, the 40 days to start his public ministry, mm -hmm. and the 40 days of after, after the resurrection. resurrection to just, it, of course, you know, nothing is an accident, but I never mm -hmm. put it together before. And I just, that's why I think this reading just touched me so much when I read it this morning. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about the 40 days of that. I didn't realize. Oh no, because he left with the presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. February. And, I, and that's right because she had her bath, which was like right. a ritual. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. After a baby, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he stayed there for forty days, so it wasn't like they ever went to the inn to go find. Right, and wasn't place. it like um, a month after his birth that, that it took the wise men to get to him? They're thinking like two years, and in Matthew, if you read it, they entered a home. Not the um, grotto. Um, well, it was a whole caravan, mm -hmm. you know, the kings and all their people, and to go down there. And so, therefore, Herod killed the babies two and two under, and under yeah. because he that didn't sense. know so, yeah. um, what the age right. was. Right. Mm -hmm. So, it wasn't just that the, the, the star was there, just, you know, and then they, because it would have taken a long time for the kings to get to, to, to Jerusalem. Did we know that? Mm hmm. Huh? I don't know how I know that. <laughs> just no, read it or I knew it was a long time because how. the way they project it in at Christmas with pictures, it looks like they're all visiting him with the mm. animals and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but broader, but when you read Matthew's but it's gospel, the Herod thing, yeah, right, killing we, the innocent yeah, two, yeah, the yeah. males. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did always wonder why it was two and mm -hmm. yeah. And when but you read Matthew's yeah. gospel the three wise men entered their home. Yeah. So they had moved from the, the, grotto. the grotto to a home. 
could have been family because Joseph's family was from Bethlehem. Um, so it was Mary's, but it's always the male's family. And so they might have at that point found family home or found whatever. And then from there they went to, after the, the kings visited, then they traveled to Egypt. Yes. So it wasn't like a, they weren't ever going to come back to Bethlehem. They were going to go back to her home or the home that Joseph had, uh, her family's home or whatever, whatever, whatever the tradition holds on going right. back to Nazareth. Well, that's interesting because they don't really know where Mary was born. They don't know whether it was Bethlehem, Nazareth, or Jerusalem. Right. I don't know. I don't know because we got Maria Valtorta and we have Marie, Maria of Agreda. So I have to look into those and see if they were told where Mary was born. But they do, especially Mary of Agreda, really get some detail about her birth. So, yeah, um, there's no homework. Um, anyways, I love that. Whole but thing. in the Bible, they don't really no, tell you. No. You know what I learned? This was, do you know what I learned? Yeah. Did you know? I know. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I'm very pleased. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, here was not, here, you might have all known this, and I probably have said this before. And if y'all knew this, wow, right? Share more so that I would know. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Because I always feel like I'm sharing with you guys. But Herod, of course, was not the rightful king. Mm -hmm. Appointed by the Romans. He was yeah, appointed by the Romans. He did. But you never really, I never, no. like when you read Matthew's gospel, he starts at Abraham. And I believe it's Luke that starts from Adam that goes into the whole genealogy. Herod was not the rightful king. He was an appointed king, not an anointed king. Like he's doing that. Rightful king. And he was condemning the rightful king. But it's not here the one who killed the holy innocents. His fourth, it's that number four again, son who condemned Christ at his crucifixion. Four is a very, I know we're looking at 40, but it's such a huge number when you look at the fourth watch of the night is when Jesus walked on water. It was the fourth night watch of the night when Mary Magdalene started the journey into the tomb, you know, for the sun to rise. And four is such a, a huge number in scripture to look into the fourth, the fourth watch, the fourth, whatever. Mary was the fourth, uh, the station of the cross. That was the first one that he meets on the, on the way. But in Catholic tradition, it's the fourth station of the cross, the number four. But Herod was not the rightful king. Jesus, the genealogy is given to you to show you that not only was he the king from heaven, but he was the rightful king in Jerusalem. He was the rightful king. And like I said, if you knew this before me, you never no. shared, shame on you. No, I'm just kidding. That's Dad. why Pilate but, wouldn't yeah. take down the inscription. Right. And the, the king the of the Jews, Jews. So bad because he was and the he said, rightful what I have king. Written, I have written. And not Pilate only, probably didn't even know why he was writing it. No, not <laughs> only from his father's lineage, but his mother's lineage so there was no arguing that he was the rightful king of the jews yeah. because his Why foster father exactly? somebody because might argue it wasn't mm -hmm. because of the blood from the foster father no it no was the from, mother. from both right right five drops from the right five drops from oh, right yeah. um but all through our Catholic history, especially around Christmas time, King of the Jews, or even at Easter time, King of the Jews, and you know, it's just like King of the Jews, and just like well, what what is significant of the title of the words King of the Jews? We know he's the King of the right. Kings, but it never really hit me why why do we put this significant a King of the Jews or Son of Man? You know, mm -hmm. like because we're Catholic and studied all this, we're always Son of God and. Why did you give him to me like a lower title? And when you read this, you're understanding that, oh, he was. It was also back to, if he had brothers and brothers, they too would have been the rightful king, either from Joseph, not as a foster father. He was, Joseph was Jesus' foster father. So if they're arguing that Jesus had brothers, you, you use that argument, then they would have been rightful kings to the That's throne. Good. And he wouldn't have told Mary, so that John, this is my right. mother. So not only his birth, but also his death, he defined that he was what? Mm -hmm. Son of man and son of God. 
and she was ever virgin. And she was ever virgin. Now you had a thing. That's absolutely Church, remove that from our tradition. Speaking of kings, virgin. King David, they say is king of the Old Testament. Jesus is king of the mm-hmm. New Testament. Mm-hmm. And it's that same yeah, lineage. Blood mm-hmm. Anointed. And speaking of that's kings a good and queens, point about Jesus. She rests not yes. happy. Oh, speaking of kings Queen. and queens, they yes. Elizabeth yes. the third. Yes. And whoever wants Second. to do the Second. next reading should, oh, should sit in this. Oh, well, if you're good, that's fine. Okay, okay. that's a good seat. Okay. Okay. We okay. Okay. give me a high yes. head start. Let's, mm-hmm. let's just move. How many is the 16th on the uh, next week? How's that? Okay, perfect. So, which one are we doing? Uh, we're going to go right to September 8th, 1928. September, volume 24. Yeah, volume 24. 8, 1928. Hmm. So, go back to the Christmas Sunday. But you, now, now, you, now that you know, so here it was uh, appointed by the Romans to be the king of the Jews, and you don't know who who was, we know that Jesus was the rightful king of the Jews, but he was appointed. Right. So there was a Herod there when Jesus, I would love to learn more about that history. Was born. Was and, born. Yeah. Me too. So you kind of like, oh, wait a second. What, he had to have always been scared that it would be taken away from him because he wasn't the rightful king right. of right. Jerusalem. He knew it could be taken away. So here the kings come and they're like, we're here to see the king of the Jews. And he's like, well, I'm right here. Um, but you can tell me where he's at, so right. I can go and you yeah, kind of homage. Homage, yeah. which you kind of understand the humanity of that whole. <gasps> mm-hmm. I'm gonna lose it. I'm kind of like my life I'm here. I'm king, and everybody yeah. honors me. It's not rightfully mine. It could be taken away as it was given. because they didn't understand what he meant as king. Even the apostles thought, "Well, I'm gonna be first in your cabinet. I'm gonna be this. Yes. I'm gonna be at a level because you're the king. You're, you're the, the king. king. Yeah, not your king." You're, the, you're a king. Yeah. So they didn't realize either that he was going to not no. come as this military warrior and what the whole plan was. Right. When they even said that, that, that Judas, why he was always betraying him because Judas was so mad yeah. because his father was a Pharisee. So Judas would have been a Pharisee. So we're just sitting there think, oh my gosh, the king of the Jews is here and he's coming from heaven. So me as a Pharisee, because you already gave us, we're already the selected elected, elected right. people oh my gosh what my seat's going to be right what do you mean you're a suffering servant and you're going to die no right. no no no. this is not what we want go get rid of the, the romans so it's like the, the, they're standing around like great you cured the blind man and the deaf but the romans are still right. killing people can you overtake them so we can go back to us being the promised land and your mm-hmm. your sacred people so that i can have my seat as you know the so whole herod didn't know either what so to your point they yeah. were, he was concerned. So mm-hmm. sure. And I, I knew it wasn't right for the You understand more like the 40 days when he goes in to see Simeon and he says he will be a contradiction to all. You unless you really can like masticate on the contradiction to all and what that meant, contradiction to what uh Judas thought, contradiction to what Herod thought, contradiction to the apostles, and they all thought of what kingship meant that you're going to come in as a contradiction because they're going to be expecting mm-hmm. you to overthrow the Romans right. and Israel to be in the nation and Chosen so forth. Right. But Israel yeah. chose to be children of Israel mm-hmm. and not, not children of God, not even during Christ's reign, but the Exodus. Like they, they took it upon themselves to say, we're children of Israel. You're children of a nation. Right. We're giving you now to go into to be the children of Israel. So the children of God, to become the children of God. And they rejected it. They've always rejected it. Therefore, you hear them always killing off the prophets and killing them off. They didn't want to hear that God was coming. They rejected. They rejected the promised land. They rejected him forever. So then Jesus comes, and of course they're going to reject him more. So you understand more the, the Simeon prophecy of the contradiction because it, it fills in those commentary notes of what, well, what, what, what was he contradicting? Everything. 
bless your God. That's my God. Mary, <laughs> yes. there's one um, at back. I was doing my daily readings last week, and in September 5th, 1926, in volume 19, I, what jumped out, which you're talking about right now, is that the human will alone devastates every good and produces all evils. So by God coming to earth, he basically just jumped right into the fire and the cesspool of crap. So all of this, you know, listen, I mean, he just was dealing with a massive scale of corruption, yeah. every direction. And again, it's because all of these individual humans were operating on their own will. Simple as that. The but will like destroys everything. But it's you're right, Gaines, but just the reading that Angela just read, but in 40 days, he took it all, placed yeah. it in the mirror, and he's like, I got you covered. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Exactly. Oh, like, totally. The miracle of the divine will is profound. Be to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 40 days. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The, um, our priest uh, likened uh, one of the homilies this week to our, our upside down world being the Stranger Things. So that the Stranger Things is a series on Netflix, and it's really about an upside down world. Mm -hmm. And he said, but Jesus came into this world, not to turn it upside down, but to turn it right side up. There's a reading where he says, hey, yep. look down and there's yeah, they're they're walking, walking, walking up. Yeah, so their feet are up in the air, it's all upside down. <laughs> I wonder if that priest does like that. Stranger Things. I love the upside down world. Oh. <laughs> September 8th, 1928. Interest of God in one who lives in his divine will. Interest of God in one who lives in his divine will. Example of the Son, how everything will be known of the sacrifices which Louisa has made to make the divine will known. I felt oppressed because of the privation of my beloved Jesus. Oh, how I would have wanted to take a leap into the celestial regions, never to leave again. And so end it with these blessed privations of him that make me live dying. Ah, yes, if by his goodness, Jesus lets me reach his fatherland. He will no longer be able to hide from me, nor will I ever again be <laughs> deprived of him, even for one instant. Therefore, hurry, my love. Let us end it once and for all with these privations of you, for I cannot take any more. And I felt so embittered that my poor soul was pierced through more than a fire sharp sword. Okay, so, so we're laughing because of the words that she uses. She she is Italian, but it's also he tells her so many times in the writings that your privations is a suffering not given to others, and that you are doing so much with those privations. So it's just funny that we're here, nineteen twenty eight, right? And yeah. she's still, still, um, still on reading. Yeah, and he also tells us. Um, you, I'm, you can't be with me because I have to chastise the world. And when I'm right. with you, do it. you yeah. let me do it. So, Nor you know, can he because he right. So if you would just play along with us, you'd be fine. You would have to suffer privations, but you choose not to. So Now that moment, my beloved Jesus came out from within my interior and told me, my daughter, courage. Don't you know that our interest in one who does my will and lives in it is so great that she is kept by us as our own thing, exclusively ours, inseparable from us. Our divine volition is inseparable from us, and as much as its light spreads, the center of it is always within us, symbolized by the light of the sun, which while expanding and extending over the whole earth, holding it in its hand of light, never departs from its sphere, nor is the light divided or loses even one drop of light. In fact, light is not separable, and if it could be divided, it would no longer be true light. Therefore, the sun can say, all of the light is mine. The same for us. The light of our divine will is interminable and inseparable, and it makes the soul in whom it reigns our own and inseparable from us. So since we keep her as our own thing, it is our interest to honor ourselves and to invest her so much with all of our divine qualities as to be able to say to all, in this creature there is divine light because the light of our fiat dominates in her. So it is our interest that everything be holy, pure, and beautiful in her and that she be invested by our happiness 
everything must give of divine will. When the earth is invested by the light of the sun, it loses darkness and becomes a light in such a way that the light acts as queen. In dominating the earth, it becomes the nourisher of it, communicating to it the life and the effects of the light. In the same way, when it reigns in the creature, our divine will dispels the evils, puts to flight darkness, weakness, miseries, and afflictions, and as queen becomes her nourisher with light, with strength, with divine riches, and with happiness. Therefore, for one who lives in our fiat, bitternesses, oppressions, and everything that gives of human will lose their place, because the light of our fiat tolerates nothing but what belongs to it. And just as our divine will takes all interest in the creature as something that belongs to it, so the creature loses all human interests and acquires all divine interests. From this it can be seen whether my divine will reigns in her. If she no longer feels any interest of her own, and if she does, it means that the soul does not possess all the fullness of my fiat. There are still little voids empty of its light, and therefore the human makes itself felt, and the soul comes to take on human interests. Therefore, let bitternesses and oppressions out of your soul. These are things which no longer belong to you. To you belongs the light and everything that the light of my will can possess. Comments? That's great. <laughs> That's a great one. I love it. Well, and I think it's, we've all talked about this before. As you journey on this path, other things that were super important to you, it's mm -hmm. kind of like that, rah, rah, yeah. you know, it just becomes really low. low. Like you, you kind of look back and think, what was that about again? Yeah. You know? And I think as you progress, that happens more and more and more. There's just more and more separation from any attachment to things of this world. Like if, if this was four years ago, I would be on the internet every single day looking at Senate polls and House Representative polls. Oh. I, I, would, I haven't looked at a single one. And oh. In fact, I'm particularly avoiding it because mm -hmm. I don't, it's not that I don't care. I do care, but I know he's got it and I'm not concerned about it. Mm -hmm. And you're it, detached from the outcome. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so it has it's truly, yeah. it, it's truly yeah. made mm -hmm. a difference. Mm -hmm. Totally. No, I can see that too. Like, I don't know what I was doing. Well, I was trying to TikTok. And uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, um, yeah. It was announced that the queen died. And I'm like, oh, the queen died, right? But I have not researched like what's happening in parliament. And, you know, who cares, right? The only thing that was significant was that the <coughs> queen died on the queen's birthday. Yeah. So that was kind of. Oh, oh, hey. mother. Yeah. On, on, on Queen the first. Oh, okay. no, oh, on Mary, Mary. September 8th. Yes. 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 Well, that's kind of I interesting. That was interesting. I, 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 I don't think they that. mentioned that as much. They probably didn't mention that as much. No. 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 And now your whole thing goes into You hear that she dies. Now you go into your hidden. You go mute and you do what you do. Right. Living in the divine will because. All he wants are souls. Right. So that's our job. Yeah, absolutely. And we're doing that. But then we also have such great knowledge, right? Right. And what knowledge do we have? We know that England as a whole nation will convert to Catholicism. So now the head of their church has just died. And now the church in England has to debate, yeah. do we make the yeah. king who divorced his wife, which is totally against our church, who remarried yeah, and was having an adulterous yeah. affair as the head of the church. And I say that not to internet or whatever, but you know in the writings that England as a nation will convert back to the Pope. So as us with this knowledge, you're like, is it now? But a lot of things have to happen. No, right? I mean, but we also know Michelle. We also know Michelle, and I'm not. I didn't say that's correct. So no, I'm excited. He tells us later on the volumes 
that every time you love me on the scale of me, I speed up the time. It will happen faster and faster and faster and faster. And I take it that anybody, he, she could have died on any day, yeah. but to die on our mother, the queen's birthday, yeah. it goes back to scripture where all kingdoms will be knocked down flat so that the kingdom can mm -hmm. reign. So yet yeah, it could be, you know, but I don't think it's centuries. I don't even know if it's 365 days. I mean, what we're reading is that he is so, this is his interest. So this is the interest of God. And you are doing what you are to be doing, which is reading and attaining as much knowledge and loving him on the scale of him and all souls and bringing all souls to the throne. Then you are speeding up time. That's our it's promise to us. And it's in the scripture for the elect. I will speed up the time. And there's a writing. He says, the more you love me with me, the more I speed up time. And my interest is so great. I'm going to lose you. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to happen to this world. And I'm not going to lose you. So I speed up the time so that I don't lose you. So right. just interesting. I just wanted to mm -hmm. no. call that out. Yeah. And piggybacking no off of what you're just saying, you know, it says, therefore, let bitternesses and oppressions out of your soul. These are things which no longer belong to you. To you belongs the light and everything the light of my will can sense. So I read this the other day. Another day he told me, what do you fear? And I want you to try and picture this. Picture this in your mind. What do you fear? Abandon it in me, and you will remain surrounded by me as though within a circle, in such a way that if enemies, occasions, or dangers come, they will have to deal with me, not with you, <laughs> and I will answer for you. True abandonment in me is rest for the soul and work for me. That's from August 6, 2019. Mm. What a beautiful, so beautiful cool. vision. Yeah. What do you have to fear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> because their interest you know, is so much about the divine will. Me. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. That's a good one. What do you worry about? Have to be yeah. the and one that's one kind of the essence guard. of what this yeah. reading is as well. <laughs> Come tingle with my lion. <laughs> 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 I'm going to continue. <laughs> After this, I was thinking to myself, how many sacrifices are needed for this kingdom of the fiat? Sacrifice of writing, sacrifice mm -hmm. of rest and of sleep, sufferings, incessant prayers, continuous debt to the human volition so that the divine may have perennial life, and many other things that only Jesus knows. And after all this, maybe nothing good will be seen, no glory to God. Mm -hmm. Therefore, so many sacrifices without utility, without effects. While I was thinking of this, my always lovable Jesus came out from within my interior and clasping me in his arms told me, my daughter, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. There is no sacrifice you have made which will not have its value and its precious effects because everything that is done in my will and to infiltrate that it be known requires divine life and communicative virtue by nature. In such a way as to communicate to others the divine life and the virtue it possesses. So much so that at this moment, everything you have done and suffered is present before God in imperative, whatever, imperative, I don't know what you call it, in imperative, imperative, Thank you, Jesus. To obtain that the creatures dispose themselves and that God concede a good so great. To obtain that the creatures dispose themselves and that God concede a good so great. What we are going mm -hmm. to see is that the world is going to dispose themselves to wanting to desire true knowledge of God. Because only knowledge can bring the kingdom. Facts. Facts. <laughs> right. Can bring the kingdom. So you're seeing this confusion yeah, and uproar crazy. and all that stuff because they don't know where to go. Who has the truth? But they all have the divine seed. But they all have the divine seed, which is searching, which inside of them search. And you, you, Michelle, are every single soul 
bringing them to the throne and the throne to them. You paused one sentence too early. Oh, you read one more going. sentence. Oh. Just one more sentence. Then when my will becomes known and its reign is fulfilled, all of the words you've written, the night vigils, your incessant prayers, you're going round and round in the work of creation and redemption. Your many years of bed, your pains and sacrifices will shine like solar rays, like diamonds and precious stones of infinite value, which little by little will be recognized by those who will have the great good of knowing my will and of living in its kingdom. There, there it was. Yep. That's what you were trying to say. I know. <laughs> and while I'm reading that, go to the book of Revelation and about the him coming again with all the jewels, with all the glory, with all the lights. And this is it. This is it. This is not a kingdom of buildings and, you know, look mm -hmm. down below, here it comes. But this is the kingdom that will be coming into all souls to dwell into all souls. And and Her, reign as king of kings. And reign as king of kings. Like diamonds and precious stones of infinite value, which little by little will be recognized by those who have the great good of knowing my will and of living in its kingdom. Well, in what stood upon my heart when you read that, especially the second time, is there's a lot of similarities because a lot of the Protestants believe in the rapture and this like glorious event. Mm -hmm. And just like the Jews of old <clears throat> time, they wanted the savior. They wanted to be this king, mm -hmm. this conqueror, this warrior. And where all the Protestants are looking for the rapture, they get Louisa. Yeah. yeah this <laughs> little lady in the bed. <laughs> and 4, the Eucharist of all things. <laughs> thousand pages of yes. yeah. being recognized little by little it's just not what people expect it's, it's great not contradiction. what people want especially it's mary just, it's the same kind yep. of thing yeah a little girl yeah yeah, yeah. It's yeah. The same yeah. woman in a bed yeah. 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 i love that picture of her. Yeah. she's like this <laughs> That's not what we're looking for. You're not it. Yeah. No. And it's like when the angel said, why are you looking up to the clouds? He'll tell him the same way he just left. And if you read his ascension, like he absorbed into light. Well, what did we just read? You're in the firmament. You are the light that is into That's all right. souls. Come right. into all souls. And you're right. When you're standing in front of someone who's telling you that there's going to be rapture and this and this and this, you just look like them like... It's not, it's not how you, you can misread that. How it's going to happen. Save our power. Yeah. But even then, because they don't want to hear what you have to say, the Jews did not want to yeah. believe that he was the king of kings. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you didn't overtake the Romans. We know we're the chosen people. This is our and land. And from Joseph. Yeah. I mean, they don't know. Nazareth. Nazareth. What? Right. Joseph, I said the son Mary, of Joseph. We don't even like, Right. Right. So just you know, so then there's so no and it doesn't it doesn't compute. There's like you were supposed to come from Bethlehem, and, and yeah. Jesus never says this. Like, well, I was born into Bethlehem, and this happened. Yeah. He never does that. This is like yeah, you'll, see. You'll, you'll see, you'll see, yeah. you'll see, yeah. you'll see. I'll destroy your kingdom in three days. I will build it. That's when he says. That's when he says. And like when they're all arguing and so forth. Yeah, I'll destroy your kingdom in three days. I'll build it. But like. And so we look at our brothers and sisters of the Christian faith, and, and I always say, you're right, keep your eyes focused on Rome. Watch, just keep your eyes focused on Rome, because they're so certain that the Antichrist is going to come from Rome. So I always just tell them, keep your eyes on Rome. Just keep every day, watch, just look it up on the internet. Rome, what's happening? What's happening? Because at least if you're focused on the right way, then, then you'll know what. God damn. All right, I lost my place. Even more. We're getting a little exaggerated. Sorry. Even more. Where am I? Even more, they will know. Oh, my goodness. Even more, they will know that the foundations bejeweled and the factories raised are cemented with the many sacrifices of the one to whom the mission of making known the kingdom of my will was entrusted. Everything will be known in clear notes. Also, those who have contributed, who have directed you, 
who have commanded you to write. And whether they interested themselves with making known, either with words or with writings, that which regards my divine fears. And this is nothing. All the good that those who will possess the kingdom of my fiat will do, and the glory that they will give me, will descend and ascend again into the ones who have been the beginning and the cause of a good so great. And even if you are in heaven, the communicative virtue of my will, which has lived in you on earth, will place you in communication with them. It will keep all the ways open between you and them. So your life and everything you have done and suffered will be in their midst. And everything they will do will have its origin in you. Because one is the divine will of one and of the other. And if you knew the glory, the contentments, the delights that will come to you, you would love to sacrifice yourself more so that my will be known and dominate in the midst of creatures. And it all kind of yeah. you know this forever. It's, just, it's the stones. If you get a chance this afternoon, do a search on the word, the stones in the book of Revelation. And this is exactly the kingdom. This is his true return. This is the king of kings. All of it. Right? Mm -hmm. yes. But you're right. I'm watching seeing a lot of the, our um, uh, Protestant brothers and sisters who are just waiting any day for the king to come to rapture them up. And again, it's that they, it's that rightful um, worship. Mm -hmm. That sacrifice is the rightful worship. And that no one will be greater than their master. And if he sacrificed from the moment of his conception to the moment of his death, then the greatest thing we could do as well is to sacrifice and to suffer. And that's rightful worship. Well, and what it says is all the good that those who will possess the kingdom of my fiat will do and the glory that they will give me will descend and ascend again into the ones who have been the beginning and the cause of so great a good. That's us, right? I mean, that's us who came through Louisa to know these things. Correct. And whoever continues to hear about it and to pick up on it through whatever way. Sure. Because we're all together mm -hmm. too right. in the divine will. Right. Right. So he may have been, well, talking about the, the her confessors and the people yeah. who asked her to write the priest, you know, like Father de Francia and those, each of those priests and Louisa, you know, because they were the, the original ones living in the divine will. Yeah. But then all of us, right. we're all living together in the divine will. Right. And there's that communication then. Yeah, but that he goes through it separately. He yeah. says everything will be known in clear notes. All those who have contributed, who have directed you, have commanded you to write, he covers them first. Yeah. But then he covers all of us later. And then those who will come to it because of that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's just very clear. There's a plan. And we see the plan, Angela, because Order. he yeah. he took the writings. She was writing volume 36. Was that uh, uh, her uh, was that? I don't want to Rose. Never mind. Um, yeah, what is her name? I want to say Rosanna. It's, 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 no, it's not, but it's not. Rosario. So it was Re Rosario was reading Rosario. volume thirty five. The priest yeah. came to take them to put them in the vault. That was God's protection because we had a, a massive war go through Europe. It was like take these writings and put them in the vault. In nineteen ninety four, Father Brown, who uh, was the beginning of the cynical. Uh, he was uh, ordained a priest on the on the day before the Feast of Christ the King in 1994. And on the feast, the very next day, he said his first mass on her bed. And then they started the beatification of Louisa Picaretta on the Feast of Christ the King in 1994. He says his first mass, and he was the secretary of the cause of beatification of Louisa Picaretta. And he was the first priest to pull out all 36 volumes and make copies of them and then translate them. So although he, in clear notes, 
you had the priest, but the priest never, no priest actually had all 36 volumes mm -hmm. until 1994. And then 1996, on the Feast of the Presentation, I just want you just to, just to think of that. The presentation where Mary's taking Christ, his first time leaving the, the cave in 40, 40 days. days, she presents the king of kings to the temple. Father Brown takes the writings of the kingdom coming and hands them to Pope John Paul II. And the church at that moment received all 36 volumes. Now, since 1996, 2022, they have sent many priests. And the latest one was Pope Francis in 2017 sent his three priests, get those writings, go through every single word. And they have been re-given back to Pope Francis. There is nothing wrong with these. This, this is zero yes. error. And so that we as a church are waiting for the church to what to give their present to present them to, yeah. sit, to present them to what the kingdom for those in possession of it. So I he, you are seeing clear, clear no, but you can like yeah. I'm sorry, I know you want to talk to me. Well, just, no, I just want to say that when you think about the whole Christianity coming from Jesus and twelve apostles, you yeah. see a lot of that same. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing. It's just this small, small group of people that's going out, and then it will start getting momentum and more and more, you know, because there are groups like this all over the yes, world. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. He says, and so if you go to Matthew 24, the gospel, when he says, um, he said, when will this all happen? When will they end happen? And he says, when the, the the gospel of my kingdom is preached around the world. So everybody's like, go evangelize, give me the four gospels. And we're like, no, darling. No, darling. This is the gospel he was talking about. This has to be preached around the world. Mm -hmm. So praise God. There are little groups, South Korea, North Korea, you name it. It is everywhere. It is spread because of our connection to Louisa, because of being the children of light that was given to God of the second generation into Christ himself to be born into this time to preach this, to use tools such as the internet, mm -hmm. to use all this. And trust me, we're not without people sitting there saying it's false, it's heresy, da 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 da. We are again, what a contradiction. Because, like you said, no way. But then Jesus says, I used Mary of Nazareth, who knew her? And now I use you. Same thing, attached to Rome. She Mary was attached to Jerusalem, and you're attached to Rome. And that's how the connection is. And, and then he goes into another writing. He says, Jerusalem had to give the temple, the second temple. So that's just it. They haven't recognized the Catholic Church as the Second Temple. The Second Temple had to go to Rome, built upon what? The, the stone, the rock of Peter, because he's buried there, <laughs> and there's the church. So yeah, we have all these other churches who are branches off of the Mother Church, but they will all go back to the Mother Church, and then the Third Temple will be rebuilt, but it won't be rebuilt out of mortar and stone. It's going to be rebuilt in the souls, and it will be given back to Jerusalem, because Jerusalem will understand finally who the king of kings is. So our suffering, when I just said what I just said, our suffering can't be the, oh my gosh, this is horrible. Our suffering has to be as the Blessed Virgin Mary, like, well, we know what's coming. Yeah. Guys, we know what's coming. What a gift. What a gift. I always thank the person that introduced you to the, to the divine will, because what a gift to be reading this and to have knowledge and to be able to, like, you can actually see in clear notes, wow, these monumental things happening. The Queen of England, if you were to really reflect upon it, not, not to take too much time, is the only really monarchy that we recognize in the world. Although there's a Queen of Spain and there's a sure. Queen of other, they have no power. But the monarchy of England does. So for her to be removed from this earth on September the 8th, the birthday of our Queen of Queens, right. you have to, oh, come on now. Connection. You cannot, I mean, it's God. You, he talked about math and order. After 96 years of walking on yeah. the right. Out of all the days of it. And her son is what, 70? He's 73. And he's, and he's now going to take over the, the kingdom. For as long as the Lord wants him to. Yeah, he does. Because he knows won't be long. So it's, well, if you read, say, well, like his mother, yeah. 
No, you read St. Paul's letter. No, all no. the kingdoms will be shattered. All kingdoms. So what we're going through, if you look, again, when you talk about Herod and being the false appointed versus anointed, isn't that just kind of what happened in the United States? No matter what you feel, you kind of really just saw somebody appointed versus anointed. You just saw the Queen of England pass away. You just say you, and if you were to be paying attention to the world, which in a not a level of who's running for, we have so many leaders over this past year who have resigned or have been killed. Do you guys know that? Japan, Japan. England, mm -hmm. Italy. That's true. Oh my gosh. I mean, either we, either, and I always say there, either I truly believe this and I'm saying this because of my belief, or it's really lots of coincidences. Mm -hmm. and who wants to live there? Not, don't even get a lion protecting you, right? You can't live with coincidence. I just, hold on. This ride's fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the suffering is there. But you, it's not suffering as in, woe is me. It's okay. All right, King coming. And all of our brothers and sisters, can you imagine all of our brothers and sisters all kneeling at the name of God, every tongue confessing that God. he is Lord? That's my if, favorite Bible verse. If we're like, granted that gift. Thing, uh, which uh, in true worship. Mm -hmm. In true worship, Michelle, we're granted that gift. Mm -hmm. Just but we know it's coming. God bestowed upon the name above all names. Yeah. Hallowed be thy name. Then the kingdom comes. That's kind of a job of Mike. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good mm -hmm. end up. Yeah. Up two readings. Thank you, Lord, because we really didn't know what you were going to do today. <laughs> That's kind of a funny bit. Yeah. 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 All right. We'll call down the kingdom since you're sitting in the seat. I think anyone can call down. Let's do it together. Again. Oh, yeah. All right. In Father, Father, Son, Son Holy Spirit, Spirit Amen. Descend, O Supreme Will, come to reign upon the earth. Descend, O Supreme Will, come to reign upon the earth. Come to Descend, O Supreme Will, come to reign upon the earth. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners, now, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. May the Lord of the Father, and the Lord of the Son, and the heart of the Holy Spirit, reign in me. Before Amen. before we sign off, we did not open it up at the very end. If anybody else had any comments or anything to share, so we'll do that at this point. You don't have to, but if you do, and drop. <laughs> so with that, we shall sign off. And I believe we not sure if we'll be on next week or not. So just keep an eye on your emails. We'll be oh, on. We will be? Okay. Yeah. All right. So we will we should yeah. be up and going again next week. Yeah, we will be. Okay. All righty. All right. Thank you all. Bye. Have, a, Bye. have a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. you guys. Thank you. Bye, Susan. Santa Cole. Bye, Susan. I didn't even get to hear you. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> and Nadira. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. And Paula. Paula was on. I see Paula. Paula. Thank you. Julie, 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 and Julie. Julie's on.